Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn, and today I want to talk about INFP subtypes. And you know, my first ever result in an MBTI test was INFP, and though my uh, result was quickly corrected by certified MBTI practitioners as INFJ, I always related strongly to the INFP's innocence and depth, and perhaps that's why I like speaking about INFP so much. I like speaking to INFPs, and I have a lot of INFP friends, and I've always felt strongly connected to INFPs. Now today I'm going to talk about different variations of INFPs that I've noticed. I'm going to give you some YouTuber examples. I've noticed there are essentially four different variations of uh, function use within an INFP. And it depends on whether you as an INFP have a higher use of introverted feeling, introverted intuition, intuitive perceiving or feeling perceiving. So it depends on how, which cognitive functions and which states in your mind that you have learned to access better and use better and draw upon in your day-to-day -day life. So I've noticed there's essentially four loops you can fall into here. Fi, FI loops, NP loops, NI loops, FP loops. And essentially the FI loop uh, is the blue subtype INFP. You know, it's the person that keeps thinking about things uh, without ever actually getting anything done, you know, these types, uh, they tend to often uh, value being right and having done the right thing. And their problem is they don't really know what is essentially right and wrong. So they're stuck in this reviewer state of constant self-evaluation of their actions and behavior. Was this good? Was this right? Should I have done that differently? Uh, should I have done it another way? You know, in this state, you know, they often feel they need constant guidance and supervision from other people. They want other people to help them define what is right and what is wrong. What should I do in this situation? Uh, what do you think about this? Is this right or should I do something differently? They feel sometimes that other people never truly help them. You know, they feel uh, unhelped. They feel that people are uh, don't care about them or don't support them enough or that other people don't give them the guidance they need and they they feel very much deeply that I need guidance, I do need support, I do need people to help me, but I don't know, because I don't truly know what to do, I don't truly know what is right and wrong. At the same time, this type has a strong moral compass, this is an FI lead type, and it's that same worry that you don't know that keeps you uh, searching and keeps you wondering and keeps you thinking, and it gives you a stronger moral compass and a stronger moral foundation. You know, these FI types, they tend to have very strong views in life, and they tend to be very innocent, very idealistic, and very artistic in a sense. Uh, they tend to have a sense of um, uh, a search for being special or being unique and finding out what's unique about themselves. And uh, there is a tendency here, and this is a blind spot in this type, to rewrite history to fit with your beliefs, you know, or assumptions. Whatever it is you decide to believe about yourself or about the world or about other people, you tend to seek evidence in your world that will confirm this belief or this assumption. So that's a blind spot for this type, something to be aware of, your tendency to rewrite history or to pick out the evidence that will agree with your assumptions. And that can validate some really sometimes crazy or unfounded beliefs. Now, a general statement or assertion for this type is, I believe what I believe. What I know is what I know. What I feel is what I feel. And it may be right or it may be wrong, but this is how I feel. And you don't need to rewrite history to fit with what your feelings are about a situation or what you think about something you can accept that, yeah, I feel something that I know factually might, may or may not be correct. And that's a big relief, I think, as an INFP, to recognize I don't need this data. There's also another type, and that's the INFP NP subtype. So uh, intuition can be not just introverted or extroverted, but it can also be reactive or proactive. And for an INFP, it's reactive, essentially. It's uh, adaptable intuition. It's an intuition that cannot be shaped or formed. It's uh, constantly in motion. It's intuition that is constantly in motion, changing constantly to the situation and to where you are right now and to what your feelings are in a specific moment. 
So this is the brainstorming subtype, and this is the red subtype INFP. This is the one that struggles to think about the consequences of their actions. You know, they're always thinking about what's next and what will I do now and uh, how can I do this and what can I do differently and how can I change that and how can I do this differently. You know, they're they're always in an act of in this uh, rebellion against what is. And here I think the blind spot it is often they tend to assume they know more than everyone else. They assume they know better than everyone else. And they assume that they can see uh, problems and issues that other people cannot. And this is their blind spot. They can read in or create problems where there are no problems. They can uh, see a problem with consensus or status quo uh, to validate their rebellion or validate their need to change and have variation in their lives. And so they can stir up trouble. They are the troublemakers of the INFP subtypes. And uh, they can also be the people that bring up new ideas. And they can be the people that see things from different angles and show different perspectives. You know, one YouTuber that I think is an intuitive perceiving subtype is Yoi Kakubuchi. I think he is a strong example of uh, INFPs with high in intuition and high perceiving use. Unusually so for an INFP. You know, with this uh, type, I think often something that's difficult is, you know, coming to terms with your worth in the system and in society. You know, extroverted thinking is a problem here. If you're, the less you use introverted feeling, the less sure you are of, uh, the less at peace you feel with yourself, you know, who you are and where you are right now. And there can be a issue here that you have to change yourself to be more valuable to society and uh, that you have to uh, learn new skills or you have to push yourself or do something differently all the time to validate yourself and to bring some kind of value to society. So that can be an anxiety. Every type, uh, every person has their own individual anxieties. And uh, INFP with high intuition and perceiving is definitely anxious about extroverted thinking. I think something that the uh, is strong in this type is this feeling that uh, they are never really given a real shot or opportunity to prove themselves. You know, they're, they're looking for an opportunity. They need opportunities. They need chances. They want people to put them in the situation or give them an op a chance to do something. But they often feel they're kind of set aside. You know, they have a great idea, but they're never given a chance to test it out and see if it will work out. So that's something that they crave deeply. You know, people that will believe in them and give them a chance to try something out. Another subtype is the INFP NI subtype. And you know, this type tends to always keep thinking about things, but they never actually make up their minds about anything, you know. They are the sages of the INFP subtypes. They are the ones that always know everything. They're always eager to learn, they're constantly learning, they're the perceiving dominant subtype of the INFP with strong introverted intuition. Everything is a question, everything is a potential discovery, they're uh, immersed with theories about everything, you know, and here I feel uh, Geek Psychology, uh, the INFP YouTuber Geek Psychology is a good example. Uh, you know, their ability to devise theories and explanations and systems for everything and their constant ability to reflect on a situation and to develop an abstract methodology or model to understand something truly. NI is really high in uh, this subtype, you know, a problem is, you know, uh, they have a blind spot and every person has a blind spot and this type's blind spot is they can rationalize any belief as correct in their head you know they have this ability to come up with a reasoning that will make anything sound correct they can in their head come up with a reasoning that will make anything seem logical no matter if it is logical or not they will find some kind of explanation that will fit they will find some kind of way to count it up in their head to make sure it's right and that means they can get into this uh, observation paralysis, this decision-making paralysis, you know, where uh, if anything can be reasoned or rationalized to be correct, then what is actually true or false? What is it actually we know? And this is also what fuels them to truly go deeper into introverted intuition and to theorize even more. <laughs> if uh, anything is correct, then there is a tendency to want to keep thinking about it until you've figured it out completely and gone as deep into it as possible. 
And I think with this Heine feed, there's a worry, of course, you know, in all of this. There's a worry that you will be improductive and that you will never get anywhere. So you need a lot of time to think for yourself and to focus about something. You need, uh, you feel a deeper need to have space and to sit by yourself and to develop and concentrate and focus and you need focus you need people that will help guide you towards focus and uh, will give you space uh, to do things your own way and to innovate and come up with your own concepts or things but uh, I think you know when you look at the blind spot or the main anxiety of this type it is uh, Essentially, what is that I am actually doing with my life? Am I just procrastinating? Am I just wasting my time? Am I just, uh, you know, constantly uh, thinking about things but never getting anywhere? What is it that will actually instill me with a sense of pride in who I am and what I've done? What is it that will actually make me feel accomplished and good about myself? And that answer, of course, is feeling perceiving, you know. Uh, Every subtype in the INFP spectrum is a result of a personal and situational imbalance. You know, you can change subtype from moment to moment. You can, uh, from situation to situation, find yourself using different cognitive functions. And, you know, since the last year, I had to develop introverted feeling a lot. My last year, I spent a lot of time developing introverted feeling. Uh, and it changes you. It changes your whole, whole perspective and script on life. Uh, suddenly everything becomes rewritten. And when you start thinking about your history and who you are, everything is different than how it was a year back or what you thought about yourself before. So it changes your perspective. And that's very interesting. You know, uh, I think what we all want to aim towards is balance in cognitive function use in the sense that we can... Uh, see all sides of ourselves and give ourselves space in all dimensions and I think a problem is people don't really do this they uh, they validate certain aspects of themselves and then they discourage other parts of themselves they say this is good about me and this is bad about me and that's also an essence for why subtypes are such a tempting idea you know you can give yourself some space to be yourself but there are also some things you react about yourself so subtypes are also about self-discovery, discovering your hidden side. For the FI type, uh, it's discovering your intuitive perceiving side. And for the intuitive perceiving type, it's discovering your introverted feeling. What is it I actually want? What is it I believe? What is it I think? With the FP subtype, uh, there is this... Uh, uh, because FPs, they're always uh, are oriented by what is right and wrong. They have a very strong moral compass, a very strong source of what's good and what's bad. You know, this is what why these types are very, very prideful. You know, if uh, uh, the FP type is uh, highly, highly proud of themselves and feel they are good people, genuinely honest, self-righteous, doing the right thing in every situation, uh, always saying and standing up for themselves, being authentic, being natural... There is a problem here with that they can fall into a holier than thou attitude, you know, that you can be so sure of what is right and that you are good and that you are in the right, that you can struggle to entertain other people's perspectives. You can't see that other people might have had a reasoning for behind their actions or what they did. You can't necessarily recognize that other people might have arguments that speak for their favor. favor. You are so sure of yourself and you are so caught in that fi pride kick, that FP pride kick, that you uh, assume you are the only good person in the room. And there is uh, here, I think, you know, with this type, the, the blind spot is, you know, uh, a tendency to constantly ask for validation from other people. You agree with me, right? You know, you, you, you also do this. You also see this this way, right? You also think this is bad. You also think this is a great idea. This uh, tendency to uh, grab attention to themselves and in this, you know, reject the introverted intuition uh, to make, to feel seen and feel heard. You know, I think this type often feels they're not seen and they're not heard. You know, they know what's right and they have the right answer, but nobody notices them. Nobody listens to them. Nobody hears them out. They, they have found out the truth about something. They're being honest, but people don't believe them or listen to them. So people make mistakes and they mess up and they do stupid things because they don't listen. 
and I think uh, a lot of FPs can relate to this. You know, when you're you're honest and people don't believe you, when you're uh, doing the right thing and you you know the right answer, and you've told the people, but they don't want to hear you. They they're so set on themselves. But in reality, often it's this type that is set on themselves. Also, they can only see themselves. And they can only see one perspective. They they struggle to entertain other perspectives. You know, if the NI subtype INFP, it's like. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. Maybe it's like that instead. Maybe it would be like this or hey, I could be right or I could be wrong. Anything could be right actually, I don't know. Uh, the FP subtype is uh, stuck in this observation paralysis where it's like they can't think something because it's too horrible, you know. Uh, no, I don't want to think about this. No, I don't think that could be a true that no that cannot be the case no there is this reluctance to hear other people or to see things out or to learn something because they, you are so sure of yourself you're just so sure of yourself when you're this subtype and uh, the interesting thought about the subtypes is this uh, paralysis you tend to experience uh, you know when you go deep into one function you tend to feel par paralyzed or blocked in other dimensions and that you go, you pour all your energy into something, and into some aspect of yourself, or into some pursuit. You know, the MP pursuit of rebellion, the FI pursuit of uh, 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 being true to yourself, and to knowing yourself, and to figuring yourself out. Uh, the NI pursuit of truth and knowledge, and you know, genuine wisdom and insight and sagehood. You know, uh, it's. Uh, you pull the brakes on other aspects of yourself uh, because of that positive devotion to something. There is a positive devotion to something that comes at the expense of something else. And that's the basis of the INFP subtypes. So the subtypes are, once again, the INFP FI subtype, the utopian idealist, the innocent, the NP subtype, the rebel, the brainstormer, the catalyst, the INFP, NI subtype, the sage, the thinker, the philosopher, and finally the INFP, FP subtype, the reporter, the individualist, the outspoken truth teller, you know, every one of these reflects pure INFP characteristics and if you put them all together into one single person there's an INFP in a true balanced state of flow. Thanks everyone for watching this video and I hope to see you all in the next one.